to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. And I am back once again. It is, uh, well, it's supposed to be Sunday afternoon when I do these things, but I got kind of got tied up with some family stuff this weekend. So here it is. It is Tuesday afternoon, and I am tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho and uh, just trying to get prepped for this podcast. Uh, You know, I didn't really do a whole lot of anything yesterday. The weather, I always talk about the weather. Always got to give the weather a report. The weather here in southern Idaho is trying really hard to be spring, but my gosh, we went from nice to you know 50 mile an hour winds and it's absolutely ridiculous i, I can't shoot my, my range is a wreck i got tables flipped over i got i got cardboard backers and and targets thrown all over the place and uh today it's blowing again and tomorrow night i have my uh i have my men's shooting group uh it's going to show up about six o'clock so hopefully tomorrow the weather's a bit nicer and i can get out and uh <laughs> get that range picked up but uh the weather just causes me a bunch of grief uh every year this time of year so i think i get used to it uh i'm definitely not um so it's just kind of one of those things um so today's podcast once again i you know i'm here i'm kind of cranking this thing out by myself so it might be a little short i don't know we'll see we'll just see how ranty i i tend to get today i got a bunch of audio clips to play for you but let's just talk about uh, i know the last podcast i talked about how the holo sun on my p30 died it died the 507 kate died and i'm not sure why and i was a little concerned um you know how long is it going to take me to get this thing back and i will give this up for i'm going to give this up for holo sun they they did it they did a really a really good job about this because when you buy your red dot from whole sun they have a little card in there right and you're supposed to like scan a little code and like register your product for the warranty right and yeah yeah i never do that I, i'm so excited to see what i get i just kind of throw that card to the side and i i got so many things around here that i own that i have never registered and uh so i was when it died and i'm kind of like on their website and i'm looking i'm like oh man i might be in trouble they got a pretty good warranty but uh i didn't register this thing right and i think you're supposed to register it for the warranty so i just acted like i had registered it i mean i didn't lie they never asked me i just asked for a return authorization filled everything out online told them uh what was wrong they sent me an email um uh with the 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 thing to print out and tape on the outside of the box and uh, i then read that i'm supposed to actually write my return authorization number on the outside of the box and marker which i did not do that either because i fail to follow directions at all i mean i just never follow directions so i didn't do that i didn't realize that afterwards but anyhow i boxed that all up got it out so it died on a uh, when did it die it died on a thursday i sent my email got my return authorization code that night I put it in the box. I shipped it out on a Friday. So it was, I didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything, starting to get a little worried. It shouldn't take but a couple of days to, to get to them because it's just down in California. I uh, didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything, and then bam, on Friday, so a week later, exactly a week later, I get the email that it is shipped out. And so it shipped out on Friday, and I got it yesterday, and uh, they didn't even fix the one I had. They just sent me a brand new one, brand new box, brand new site brand new batteries brand new screws brand new everything so i've got it all mounted up uh, yesterday um and it should be good to go today but you know i mounted up use a little bit of use a little bit of the the uh you know don't come off stuff the loctite right put that on there uh let that uh, get all you know cured up and dried up and uh i was going to go out and sight in this new red dot my new to me red dot today but the, like I said the wind is just fierce out there and i don't even like walking from the war room to the house it's blowing so hard and it's it's absolutely miserable out there so i'll probably go out tomorrow and get that thing dialed back in again and i will uh get on to doing some more training with that thing so uh you know good on holosun i you know good warranty i didn't even do it as a consumer i was not a responsible consumer and i i did not 
fill out the warranty card. I did not register the warranty card and still no questions asked. Like it was just an email. Was one email is all I sent and I didn't have to talk to anyone. It's just cool, right? I mean, you don't want to talk to people on the phone sometimes, but I didn't have to talk to these people on a, the phone at all. Like sent an email a couple hours later, got my return authorization, mailed it, got a email a week later, exactly a week later. It said, it's in the mail. This is, this is the, the, the tracking number and bam, it showed up at my house on Monday gotta love it no questions asked good on you holo son uh you know i will i will i will take it i will take it uh that's that's great customer service in my book so i'm kind of happy with that um what else do i got going on here well i had a i had a week off from all the uh all the uh, the group classes um the women's and the and the men's it was a fifth week and so we never do classes on the fifth week um so I am back at it this week. I got some more classes coming up, and they'll be happy to get out on the on the range again. I'm sure. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. The weather's supposed to be beautiful, uh, so that'll be fun. Um, and I went ahead and put together another another class. I'm always kind of trying to put together some classes, and you know, it's 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 interesting because some classes take off, some of them don't. It just kind of you try to find out what interests people, right? And so I put together kind of, a, I called it a, con, a concealed carry one, two, three. I guess I could have went concealed carry ABC. I don't know. I just went with one, two, three. And what it is, it's going to be about a four hour class uh, for, for really reasonable four hour, four hour class for a hundred bucks. I mean, that's, I tried to like really lower the price to see if I could entice some people. I mean, it's kind of a weird area I live in out here. Um, and people don't seek out a lot of training like you would maybe a bigger Metro uh, a type area. So, um, you know, if you don't have anything cool to razzle dazzle them, like a big multi million dollar range and, and, and old cars to shoot from and stuff, and and um, military uh, type, uh, you know, uh, training grounds that they get to come play on, then it's, it's a little, it can, it can be a little tough to get people out here. So I put together this class, Concealed Carry One, Two, Three, and we are going to, it's kind of like a, I wanted to call it boot camp, but I thought that might ruffle some not ruffle feathers but scare some people off so i didn't want to do that because I, I know who my clientele is so uh we got an hour of the fundamentals uh and then well yeah let me let me pull this up here um so i lay this all out here oh where's it at where's it at where's it at can't find it can't find it can't find it there we go uh, i'm gonna have you know start the class off we have a big over safety we have an hour of fundamentals then we go out on the range and we have an hour of the 50 50 drill trigger press reset that you know stuff like that and then we have another hour out on the range where we do you know the sight to line drill which focuses on again the trigger press the reset but then we're going to focus on the grip and we're going to focus on uh, having the right grip strength and and and, and we're going to focus on stiffening the ri the wrist and how to accept that recoil and we're going to do that and then we are going to switch it up and we are going to they're all going to bring whoever takes the class going to be required to have a kydex holster and we're going to work on the draw just some um just some basic um some basic draws start with the dry draw and then we'll go out and do some live fire so i'm kind of looking forward to that kind of quick and dirty um get them in get them out you know give them uh give them a touch you know give them the basics and a touch of other stuff to come that they can work on themselves or, or come back and and seek more classes for so um i think it'll be a good time for uh four hours for 100 bucks uh, firearms class that is a smoking deal anywhere smoking deal anywhere you go so we'll see we'll kind of see how that goes um kind of go from there i guess um, there was a story, and I'm sure you guys all have seen it, that kind of bro actually broke over the last day or two. It was a, a gentleman down in San Antonio, and he woke up, and his truck had been stolen. His truck had been stolen. And in this truck, he remembered that he had left an Apple AirTag. So he was able to track... Uh, to track this truck down and that he did and i've got a little audio clip here that we will take a listen to and then we will kind of discuss in in detail uh what i think about uh this and and like i said just kind of go over my thoughts on it i san antonio police are still debating whether to charge the man who tracked down and killed an alleged thief who stole his truck. Police say the shooter used air tags to locate his missing Chevy. He and two others found the Silverado in a shopping center on the southeast side and confronted the man inside the car. 
The shooter told SAPD he fired when the thief flashed a gun, though police have not said whether they found a weapon at the scene. Today, SAPD says officers are still investigating. But a former district attorney tells our Matt Houston police shouldn't have to think too hard about whether to charge the shooter with a crime. Police say the shooter called 911 to report his Silverado missing, but he didn't wait for officers to show up and help. Instead, he grabbed a gun and two relatives and went to this shopping center near Brooks. I know that it's frustrating, but please do not take matters into your own hands like this. Really took to that. But XDA, now defense attorney Nico LaHood, says SAPD's warning does not mean the shooter broke the law. Whether something is wise to do or not is different than whether it's illegal. Legally, LaHood looks at yesterday's shooting as a series of separate, almost unrelated events. You are allowed to chase a thief to try to save your things. Just about everyone in Texas can carry a gun, and it's okay to defend yourself from immediate apparent danger. You just have to make sure that you educate the jury about what the law really is. It's not what our perception of the law is. LaHood says if he were district attorney again, he would not press charges against the shooter unless police prove the alleged thief actually did not have a weapon. If that happens, this is a whole different case. And again, police have not confirmed they found a weapon on the alleged thief or in his possession. They've only told us they are still investigating. But just one person fired a gun yesterday, police say. The man who tracked his truck to that parking lot. Isis? So I'm a little bit torn on this. I mean, I know... So I get we got a bunch of questions to answer here, right? So this was in, down in Texas, and in Texas, uh, uh, by the way, I didn't I didn't uh, I use it as an audio clip, but uh, Colion Colion uh, Noir on YouTube, check it out. He's got a great breakdown of this and gives his thoughts as well. So I'll kind of throw a shout out to him. Uh, that would be that would definitely uh, be one to check out. But there's a lot of different ways to look at this. So you know, in the state of Texas, you can legally defend your property. You definitely can le legally defend your property and is what the you know what the guy did what it was it right i mean legally can he do that well you know I, I i listened to that news clip and i listened to that attorney say you got to look at it in kind of a three separate you know like a three-step type scenario and you know they're saying we don't know exactly we just know what we're told or at least you know we just know you know the police aren't letting us know if there's been another firearm there but you know the the truck was stolen guy had an air tag so he called the police said the truck is stolen he then went to find the truck on his own he then confronted the guy that presumably stole the truck since he was sitting in the driver's seat and uh there in a little uh, confrontation happened um and uh he shot the guy that stole the truck he said that there was a, the guy flashed a gun at him right so there's a lot the 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 that, that, that went down there we we this is what we were told happened we don't know if it's happened this is what we were told so in, in this way this guy approached this guy that stole the truck he went up and said hey i don't know what he said you give me my truck back that's my truck police are on the way and then the guy flashed a gun and then he defended himself so you look at those those different situations there and so that makes sense legally at least in the state of texas mind you this doesn't go everywhere. You need to study your state law to figure out what you can and can't do in your state. In the state of Texas, this might this might have gone okay. I mean, this 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 might this might go you know okay for this gentleman. You know, uh, given the fact that hopefully he's not lying about the other guy having a, a firearm or anything like that. Um, and then you got to look over it as what was it worth it? Was it worth it? Uh, you know, you just, you took the life and you may have been defending yourself, right? But you, and I'm not talking about the legal aspect of it at this point. I'm going to talk about um, what, are you a bloodthirsty person to a certain extent, right? Because, I mean, this guy went up and he confronted this gentleman and, and he didn't have to, he had called police. And if the police were truly on the way, which I'm going to assume that they were, he called the, the police, right? And we talk about this in my class. Sometimes it's, it's best to be, uh, it's, you know, you're better off just being a, a good witness, right, than, than getting involved. He called the, the law enforcement. They were on the way. And instead, he went up there and confronted this guy. And he had a firearm on him. And it sounds like if you got a firearm on you, maybe you, 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 you know that, that you might be sticking your nose where you shouldn't be, right? Right. 
why not avoid the situation? Avoid having to take a life, right? You shot someone over a truck. And granted, that might be legal in the state that you're in, but really you took someone's life over a over an item over over a a, a a a possession over it wasn't like you were defending someone else it's not like you're defending your kids and i'm not thinking that that um criminals need to just go out and be able to get away with absolutely everything because I, I don't believe that at all but my gosh, really? I mean, you, you had a tracker on the truck. Law enforcement could have tracked him down. And once you let him know that you had found the truck and that you had the tracker, I'm sure they were all over it, right? But yet you went and confronted this guy and ended up having to shoot him over it. So you shot someone over uh, a big chunk of steel, over a vehicle, over a possession, over an item. To me, I don't know that I could live with that, to be 100% honest with you. Now, if my family, if my child was in that truck and someone was trying to take it, I would definitely defend my kids, right? And I would shoot someone over that, right? Um, it's a truck. It's replaceable. You have insurance. And I know it sucks it got stolen, but now you have to live with that. I mean, you got to you gotta think, right? Where is – the law may allow it, but man, where is your human – I want to say decency, right? But it wasn't decent for the guy to come steal your possession. But yet you shot someone over over your truck. You had law enforcement on the way. You could have just sat back and let it happen, right? You could have just, and if you would have left the mall, you could have said, hey, look, I got my phone. I've got this tracker. This is where it's going. This is what the truck is. Let's go. Let's go get it figured out, man. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't see the... You know, I read the comments when I watch this when I watch this YouTube video and I see the news stories, and people are like, "Oh, justice served," and it's uh, it's you know it sucks when when you have a you know when you're a criminal. Sometimes you know you get what you deserve, and I get that. I get that if you're defending life. I get that if you're defending your family. You're de- defending, you know, yourself. This gentleman, even though Texas says you're probably legal to do so, this gentleman put himself into a situation where he had to use his firearm and he had to he, he or he might possibly have to use his firearm which ended up he did have to use it and uh, was he defending himself yeah possibly we don't know we just know what we're told at this point um but still you could have avoided that you could have avoided that just like i tell the people in my class right don't get your carry permit and then holster your gun and go to somewhere where you normally wouldn't have gone without it right just getting a concealed carry permit or, or carrying a gun does not make you 10 foot tall and bulletproof i mean honestly it doesn't don't go looking for trouble now here's my question and it sounds like i'm a gun grabber and i'm not standing up for gun rights and that's far from the truth i just look at it i think slightly different than most people do um and I'm not sure. I mean, that's just the way I'm wired, right? I question absolutely everything. Would this gentleman have done the same thing had he not been armed? If he didn't have a gun with him, would he have done the same thing? Uh, I, I believe that even without a firearm, he probably would have tracked the vehicle down and he probably would have called law enforcement, but he probably would have sat in his parking lot and said, hey, look, I got eyes on this guy. This is where the truck is, right? But because he had a firearm, he had enough courage to go up there. And I don't know if he was like, I'm going to shoot you, you you mangy dog, you stole my truck, or give me my truck back. And then uh, 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 altercation ensued and and you had to defend yourself. I'm not sure exactly how that worked out. Right now, honestly, I just know what the news stories and what YouTube has told me happened, right? The interviews from the law enforcement and whatnot. I just know what I've been told. I still think that that there was poor choices made there. Honestly, there was poor choices made. And I know that this, you know, if this story comes up on my local radio show that I do every Fridays, that uh, I'm going to take this stand and uh, I'm just going to get crucified. <laughs> Even in Idaho where I'm located at, you know, I'm just going to get I'm going to get absolutely crucified if this comes up but it's to what i believe man you shouldn't be in a hurry to use your firearm you shouldn't be in a hurry to take someone's life you shouldn't be in a hurry to to feel like you're 10 feet tall and and, and superman just because you have a firearm that's not the way it works right there was a uh, there's a, a quote out there and it said an armed society uh, should make for a, a polite society 
And that's the way it should be, right? You shouldn't be in a hurry to use your firearm, honestly. That's, I mean, that's my take on it. I don't know what your take is. You may or may not let me know. I know I'll probably get a few text messages uh, for some people, and that's cool. That's fine. I mean, I, I get it. Um, and, I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at my phone here. I'm, I'm getting a phone call. We'll take that later, though. Um, so I've got another audio clip that I want to I want to play, and this one's about five five minutes long, and it, it it's going to sound a little uh, contradictory uh, to this this Texas thing to a certain extent, and kind of how I feel. But what it is is it it talks about um, it's Lindsey Graham of all people, and they're having like a Senate Judiciary ju- Judiciary uh, Committee uh, hearing or meeting or whatever you call it. I'm not that into politics, but um, it's funny, but it's interesting because he's talking to people and he's he's asking questions about the rise in concealed carry permits, the rise in gun ownership, and he's talking about how people are being lax on criminals, and about how there's this turnaround time. These these criminals, they they go, they get out really quick on probation, and they commit all these other crimes when they should have still been in prison. And you're going to say, well, how does that relate to that? You know, that kind of relates back to your story about the Apple AirTag in San Antonio, Texas, right, Todd? Well, yes, but just because people are getting pissed off doesn't mean you need to run out and look for the first opportunity to shoot someone. Okay, I I, I know sometimes I've been quite a bit i've been pretty judgmental of law enforcement because i'm judgmental of absolutely everything i don't know if you guys have picked up on that yet that's just the way that i do things that's just who i am i question god himself right i mean the very existence of god himself i'll question that all day long just because that's how that's how i work uh but I understand it, but you shouldn't go be a hero, right? You shouldn't necessarily go and try to be a hero. If you can avoid it and let law enforcement come in and do their job, by all means, do that. Avoid the gunfight if you at all can. And this situation in San Antonio, at least from all the information I have, says this guy could have avoided this all day long. He just chose not to. Um, let me go ahead and I will play uh, this five-minute uh, audio clip. If, it, if I feel like it's getting a little too boring, I may cut it off. But uh, I don't know. It's just interesting uh, interesting uh, gun stats and, and just kind of interesting what they have to say, especially the line at the very end. So I'll go ahead and play that for you. How many times was this gentleman uh, involved with shooting at people? I'm I'm not sure in total, but it seems like at least six or seven. Okay, and he was released based on what charge? He was facing a charge and released? Uh, the first time he was facing at least one felony domestic violence charge and uh, at two others, I'm not sure whether they were misdemeanors or felonies under Texas law. Okay, is it pretty fair to say that this guy should not have been out on the streets? Absolutely not. He was very clearly a danger to both specific individuals and the public at large. Mr. Manguel, uh, is this a common problem where our criminal justice system has a revolving door when it comes to people who are exhibiting violent behavior? It most certainly is a common problem and one that is a longstanding problem as well. I mean, one of the statistics I didn't get a chance to get to was that between 1990 and 2002, the Bureau of Justice Statistics reported that over a third of individuals convicted of violent felonies were either out on probation, parole, or pretrial release at the time of those offenses. As our criminal justice system has gotten softer, that problem's only gotten bigger. So when you look at what America is facing, would you agree with me the best thing we could do as a nation is to make sure that our parole laws and our attitude toward violent criminals is changed so that they are not out hurting people, they stay in jail? I think that's exactly right. I mean, one of the biggest challenges that we currently face, as evidenced by the the data on the role that repeat offenders play in serious gun violence, is that we are systematically failing to draw and enforce a line as to how much repeated criminal conduct we are willing to uh, accept and tolerate. Well, if your proposition is true, America would be responding uh, in a certain way. Uh, do you realize, uh, Mr. S- Ms. Swear, that from 1991 to 2019, the number of guns uh, in America owned, number of weapons owned by Americans has doubled? 
I am aware of that, yes, Senator. Do you number the, are aware of the fact the number of concealed carry permits have increased by sevenfold? Uh, I, would, I know it has increased exponentially. I will take you at your word that it's roughly sevenfold. Are you aware that between 2019 and 2020, 58 percent increase in gun purchase by African Americans, 43 percent increase by Asians, 46 increase in purchases by uh, Latino Americans, uh, 40 percent of those purchases are made by first-time gun buyers. Are you aware that uh, from 2005 to 2020, a 77 percent increase in gun ownership by women, uh, and that uh, from 2019 to 2020, uh, a majority of people buying guns were women. Are you aware of all that? Uh, yes, Senator, I am. Why do you think that's going on? It's because there are a lot of Americans, specifically, as you mentioned, women and ethnic minorities, who a lot of them for the first time in their lives, beginning in the last couple of years, um, looked around at the state of reality in this country with sort of widespread um, yeah. uh, and issues with with policing with um well let's just stop there for a moment uh, mr lindley you've been a police officer thank you for your service how's morale among police in america generally speaking thank you for the question senator i think overall morale is is decreasing yeah and there are probably a lot of reasons for that but it's harder to get people into law enforcement now and I, i'd like to work with people to try to change that mr rubin do you agree with the heller decision that uh, interpreted the second amendment to be an individual right was that a good legal decision yes sir you do yes yeah, thank you uh, miss glenn uh, your experience was was terrible um your husband former husband had been charged with armed robbery. Had he been convicted of armed robbery or? I don't know my, make sure I got it. Yes, that. many years before the incident, yes. Okay, and he had actually been charged with kidnapping you too yes. before the shooting. Months before the incident. Yeah, so I guess here's my point. Um, Senator Cornyn has shown the way to work on responsible gun ownership limitations. I don't, I don't think there's anything in this case that says common sense doesn't prevail. But this Bruin case and Heller case are important in my view. It, Mr. Chairman, it reinforced the idea that the Second Amendment is there for individuals and that individuals have a right to defend themselves uh, in a responsible way, even outside their home. So what I would hope this committee could do is end, to the extent possible, the revolving door policies that allow people time and time again to come back out on the streets hurt their fellow citizens. Uh, in this situation, I will just add in conclusion, the reason so many people are buying guns is because they've lost faith in their government to protect them. That is the phrase of the year right there. The reason so many people are buying guns is because they have lost faith in their government to protect them. Now, the libertarians in me says, oh, well, you know, you know, people need to be a little more self-sufficient anyway, and they need to question everything and not just totally 100% rely on government for food and for protection and, and for all this stuff, right? You need to take care of yourselves. You need to be independent, you need to be independent and you need to use government, you know, small government, less government, very little government, right? They're there for a, a handful of things and that is it, not this big, fat, bloated mess that we have right now. But, I mean, they talk about in there that... Um, you know, we've talked, I've talked about it like a ton over the last three years, right? About all the first time, the first time gun owners, the first time gun purchases, the women purchasing uh, guns, minorities purchasing guns in record numbers. And why is this happening? Well, just he phrased it up perfectly at the end, right? The government did what? The government talked about defunding the police. The government let riots ravage neighborhoods. And there's people that live in those neighborhoods, people on the right, people on the left, uh, minorities, women, anyone living in those neighborhoods saw that, hey, look, I've preached and preached and preached that I don't need a gun because the government would be there to protect me. The government would... Um, Law enforcement would be there to help me when I needed them. 
Well, they're not. They're not even stopping these riots. In fact, they're telling people to keep law enforcement out of the area, that law enforcement will not be in the area. And these groups of rioters were going around burning down buildings, breaking windows, flipping cars, setting fires, all kinds of stuff. And people had were living in those areas, and they had to be able to, to defend themselves, whether they were on the street or whether they were in their house. And so, yeah, they went and got firearms. People that normally uh, in the past or before then would not have, they wouldn't even have dreamed of it, ended up with firearms. Because why? Because they needed to protect themselves. It is not up to the government necessarily. It is up to you to help, right? When you need a firearm in your house at night, when someone kicks open your door at two o'clock in the morning, right? I know this sounds cliche. This sounds, you hear this all the time, but I can, I'm there. I am the first responder. You are the first responder. It may take law enforcement three or four or five minutes at the best to get there. And if they get there, they, they may or may not be able to handle the situation. Probably they will but they still have to get there. A lot can go down in four or five minutes. If you have a gun on one side of you and a phone on the other side of you, which one are you going to pick up? The phone won't defend you. Phone won't defend you. The phone won't stop anybody. You can get people on the way, but it won't stop what's going on. A firearm probably will. A firearm probably will. But then again, if you have a firearm, be responsible. Make the responsible choices. Make the good decisions. And do what? Know when you should and shouldn't use the thing. Know the value of life. Understand the value of life. Be the better person. Get training. Make good choices. Be responsible. It's not like the video games, people. Be responsible. That's all I ask. That's what, that's, that's what, that's all anyone should ever do. Be responsible. Make good choices, right? Make good choices. So that's, I mean, that's my take on that. We've talked about it in mass. It was just good, you know, before in many other podcasts and the radio show and everywhere else. And it's good to hear that, you know, to see that on YouTube. Someone else is saying that someone of, some authority i guess if you want to give lindsey graham authority uh but they are talking that about that they're 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 mentioning that they know that that some people see that um so there you go there is that so um we've talked uh also a lot about this and this is very this is a very interesting uh uh, uh audio clip i got here is it, it was a news it was a news story and i uh they may say they're 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 where they're from it's kind of a local news um outlet um talked about a the ar-15 and assault rifles they talked about the ar-15 and assault rifles do you see what they did there they separated them into two the ar-15 and the assault rifles i've never heard media the news media outlet anyone come out and actually talk about how they are two totally different things so i i'm gonna go ahead and let's see which button was that i'm gonna go ahead and play that and uh, check it out The Second Amendment to the Constitution gives Americans the right to bear arms, and about a third of U.S. adults say they personally own a gun. But many anti-gun activists are calling on our nation's leaders to implement stricter gun laws and even ban some types of guns completely. Kiara Brown breaks down a common misconception about the most popular rifle in America, the AR-15, as we lead local. This is a semi-automatic rifle, commonly known as an AR-15, created in the 1960s for civilians by the gun company Armalite. This is an automatic rifle, known as a machine gun or an M4, also created by Armalite in the 1960s, but made for military soldiers. This is an assault weapon. An AR-15 is not. The military was looking for a new weapon and they developed the M16. Um, a couple years after that, uh, Armalite decided to make a civilian version of the same rifle and that's what they put out on the market was the AR-15. AR stands for Armalite rifle, not assault rifle. AR-15s have become a powerful political and cultural symbol in America. Mass shootings and gun control debates have divided our country as anti-gun activists demand assault weapons to be banned. 
But assault weapons have been banned since 1934 when the National Firearms Act was enacted. They have a magazine that holds anywhere from 5 to 30 rounds in it. And uh, it's a semi-automatic rifle, meaning each time you pull the trigger, a round will fire. But you have to pull the trigger in order for the round to fire. This is the same gun, just in a wood stock. So it looks like it's not scary, as people say, right? Um, but, you know, it's not an assault rifle, it's not an assault weapon, and it's not a weapon of war. Handguns are the most common weapon types used in mass shootings in the U.S., with 161 different handguns being used in 111 incidents between 1982 and March 2023. Semi-automatic weapons have been used in 58 shootings in those minutes. years. We had guns growing up all the time. We carried them in our vehicles. We did everything. And nobody ever got a gun out of their vehicle and started shooting anybody. So what's happened since, let's call it 1995, what's happened since 1995 to now that people are shooting everybody? I mean, is it guns? The guns haven't changed. The gun laws haven't changed. Fuller says the best way to ensure safety when dealing with any type of gun is to educate yourself and practice basic gun safety. And whether you own a gun or don't, a basic understanding of guns is always good to know. Kiara Brown, KX News. The fact that uh, I found that news uh, clip, that audio clip, and it was actually done on a news network, a news channel, and they actually came out and said that is phenomenal. I've never heard that before. Uh, we talk about it all the time, and if you're a gun owner, you may or may not understand the difference between a, an assault rifle and an AR-15, uh, but there definitely is one, but the, uh, they won't come right out and, and, and tell you that because the media, the gun grabbers, I won't say the left because I know they're not all gun grabbers, but the, the gun grabbers... Uh, would have you believe that AR, in fact, most of them, a lot of the people, the gun grabbers and stuff that, that say this, the people even on the left that, that come out against firearms, um, they may not actually know. Like they, they, they may not actually know what AR stands for. And, and just like they said in the news, it does not stand for assault rifle. It stands for Armalite rifle. And they like to take... Uh, um, they like to take these words and these phrases, and they like to twist them and 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 turn them and turn them scary, right? Um, it's absolutely fascinating to me that they uh, uh, that they that this was an actual news story. So uh, good on uh, good on uh, that that news network, that media network for for coming out with that. So we've got uh, I got one more. Where's it at here? One more clip here. And it's about Kentucky and the fact that they just put a uh, Second Amendment sanctuary law into place. And I'm sorry if you hear this background noise here. That's my uh, <laughs> that's the newest Patriot Defense employee. That's my uh, she's in charge of security. That's Sedona. And she's uh, she's chewing on her chew toy. I'm sorry if you hear that in the background, but I'll go ahead and play this clip and, and get her muted out of here for you. So here you go. Kentucky is now a Second Amendment sanctuary state after a new law took effect this morning without the governor's signature. It comes just 24 hours after the latest mass shooting, this time at an elementary school in Nashville. Bodie Brooks joins us now in studio to break down the new law. Bodie. Yeah, Monty, Marvin, the law requires local and state police officers to not enforce any future gun regulations that come from the federal level. Now, this kind of shooting typically brings a debate on gun control. I got into this movement because I wanted my grandchildren to live in a safer children world than my daughters did when they were growing up. And yet we're not in that place right now. Kathy Mikas is one of many Kentuckians pushing for laws to prevent gun violence, like safe storage and expanded background checks. She believes making Kentucky a Second Amendment sanctuary state is a step backwards in safety. If the federal government passes a ban, we're not going to use our taxpayer dollars to help them enforce that. That at its root is House Bill 153, now Kentucky law without the endorsement of the governor. As Fox 56 political analyst Jonathan Miller puts it, it's the ultimate messaging law that Kentucky is a pro-gun state, but its effects may not go far. Remember that this only prevents state and local law enforcement officials from enforcing these federal laws. It doesn't prevent uh, the ATW or, or federal agents uh, from enforcing them. So the, the impact of this would be limited. 
And that's if it's constitutional. Miller says the new law could come to the courtroom to work out the debate over whether federal law is supreme to state law and how it's enforced. A similar law was ruled unconstitutional in Missouri. The Nashville shooting could fuel that first lawsuit. Law enforcement has come out and said it's dangerous for them. It puts their lives at risk because it, it interferes with their ability to cooperate with the Federal Bureau of Investigation and other federal agencies. But to be clear, this bill does not stop all federal gun regulations, just ones made by the Biden administration and beyond. This federal ban becomes effective January 1, 2021. Any previous federal laws regarding firearms will be upheld in the state of Kentucky. Right now we have a president in the Oval Office who is executive order happy. The new law also calls for local police officers to be charged if they enforce future federal gun laws. Lawmakers can also come back to amend the law should the political tide shift at the federal level. Marvin. So, I mean, again, I, I always like these, and I've talked about them in the past. I like these sanctuary laws uh, that these states and counties, I know we had a big push here where I live in Idaho, the the towns and counties and stuff did this a few years ago. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's great when states do the same, but, uh, you know, I always tell everyone it also depends on, I mean, these are great, right? It's great to have that in place, but it also depends on are your county people, all your state officials, are all your leaders going to stand up when it comes to it, right? Uh, when it comes right down to it. So uh, it's interesting. And it's in interesting that over in uh, Ken was that Kentucky, right? Uh, yeah, that over in Kentucky, that this uh, only passed because what? Because the governor refused to sign either saying yay or nay so then it automatically becomes law so that speaks a lot about your you know who if you live in kentucky that speaks a lot about your governor uh you know that he was unwilling to sign this but he didn't say no but he didn't say yes so he didn't have the cojones to do anything really so it's interesting to see where where he stands um you know and i you know missouri had something like this that they put into place which i think was eventually struck down um as as uh, i don't know i think it was i think pretty sure it was struck down but you know you know you need to check this out and, and kind of keep an eye on this and uh we'll see you know these different states are, are, are rising up and trying to do things to like protect their citizens and i think this is a i think this is a good thing um what it takes though is leaders is leadership leaders in there that are going to lead you that are going to stand up for you that are going to shut stuff down at the state line if they have to um so very very interesting uh, how this works out we will we'll kind of keep an eye on it i'm sure it'll be front page of news at least on the uh, places where i uh, where i get my news um so uh it, you know, real quick it's a little in a little off off gun the firearms topic but um it's really interesting uh, this whole, this, these whole, and I don't know how you feel about it. I know it's just kind of, it can be kind of a silly platform. I mean, I'm on it and I enjoy watching it. And we're talking about TikTok. If you haven't figured it out right now, they're coming after TikTok. They want to shut TikTok down. They want to do all, well, you know why they want to shut TikTok down? You want to know why? First of all, the people that are fighting against it and they w are fighting uh, against uh, uh, keeping, you know, excuse me the people who want to shut tiktok down they have tons of money and tons of of of, of stocks and invest in their full their 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 invested heavily into meta and these other social media platforms right who's in charge of meta who's in zuckerberg right and who does zuckerberg give money to he gives money to the government he works with the government tiktok is refusing to do that and you can say all you want about they're taking your data and they're using it on this and they're storing it. you know what screw that all the social media companies do that Facebook has done that. In fact, they've been gotten in trouble and fined for it because they've actually taken it and sold it. And I'm sure TikTok does the same thing. But TikTok, they they don't have any government control over them, right? They post, they'll let stuff roll on there that, that, that they need to roll. And the stuff, and I listen to these other podcasts, and you know, I listened to one this morning, actually. It was uh, uh, Forgotten American. Um, 
go check him out. He's a friend of mine. The Cajun Cowboy uh, puts that one on. It's a great podcast. And and he he played a, a small news clip about one of these train derailments. And he's like, well, and this is the last clip you're going to hear about that because they won't update you with anything. Uh, I don't know where you're going to see updates for that. Well, you know what? TikTok. I'm, I'm not even joking. I am on TikTok more for the news than I am anything else because you're going to get people that are there. You're going to get people that live in the town by where the train crashed. You're going to get live video. They're going to tell you what they're hearing. They're going to tell you what they have gone out and seen, right? And and, and, and whether it be a train de- derailment leaking poisons into the water, into the into the ground soil, whether it be a, the, the, the hurricanes that struck down in Florida last year, whether it doesn't matter what it is, you're going to get p- someone who is there, who is l- going to make a TikTok video, a, typically a live TikTok video, and you get to see what is happening, right? Um, and there's some of these news stories that they don't want to delve too deeply. They want to control the narrative. And how do you control a narrative? You shut down and you control the outlets that might speak about it. And we all know the media companies, right? The news media companies are bought and paid for. And they, they know they, 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 they only talk about certain things. And they talk about the certain ways that they want to talk about it. And you only get their narrative. And anything that they, that they want to feed you, that's what you're going to get. You got places like TikTok that aren't in bed with, with them, aren't in bed with the, the government. And you get that kind of news from them. News that you're not going to hear anywhere else. Like the honest, the honest truth, honestly. So I'm a TikTok guy. I like TikTok. I know I'm almost 50 years old and I like TikTok and I, I, I view it mostly for, for the news. And then they, they focused, all, you know, in these trials, they focused on these, oh, the TikTok challenges and the TikTok this and the TikTok. That. I watch it for the news, man. I, that's why I watch it. I, I hear about all kinds of stuff happening before it actually comes out on the news. I see it on TikTok. I see it on 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 that social media outlet. So anyhow, I'll back down. That's a gun show. It's not 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 the TikTok show. All the Patriot Defense does have a TikTok channel. So yeah, you may go check that out if you want to. Uh, you can find us on TikTok. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, go ahead and if you're on all those social media, it's good for you. And if you are great, follow us, like us, subscribe, subscribe to the podcast, share everything on social media, help us grow. That would be absolutely fantastic. Help me grow, help uh, Patriot Defense grow on all the social media platforms and the podcast do that i would very much appreciate it um and like i said the more we grow the 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 more people we can reach uh the better this gets so uh if you can do that that would be absolutely fantastic once again thank you uh thank you for uh for listening and thanks for all your support i do appreciate it you want a question you want to comment you can call or text area code 620-794-6223 that's area code 620-794-6223 uh, I will try and catch you guys. Actually, if I, I should see you. It might be a little late. Uh, give, forgive me for this weekend for getting this out late. Uh, but we do have Easter weekend coming up, and I'm not sure what my family has, has planned. So um, I'm going to just kind of keep the wife happy and do whatever she wants me to do. So podcast will happen, but it may be a little late. If I don't see you guys before then, um, everyone have a great Easter. Spend time with your families and uh, keep your fingers crossed that the warm weather is upon us. And when the warm weather gets here, uh, you guys need to keep everyone uh, that has lots of snow in your thoughts and your prayers because I think there's going to be a lot of flooding. We've got a lot of moisture out there, so it'll be uh, interesting to see where this all goes. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.